Okay, folks. So what we're going to do here is we're going to modify this Shinohara switch curve turnout to make it DCC friendly. Um, pretty much do this to every switch I have, whether it's Pico, Atlas, or whatever. Uh, there's always some type of modification that I do. First and foremost, we got to do the points. As you can see, the points are tied together with a single crossbar which shorts them, and we don't want that. We want each point to be the same polarity as the running rail that it's next to. These particular Shinohara switches already have the second shorted point position already removed, and they have the equivalent of rail joiners connecting them together, so that much we don't have to do. But what we will do is end up putting a jumper wire across that rail joiner for two reasons. We want to make sure that the points don't slip out. Uh, and secondly, we want to make sure that there's good electrical continuity uh, to the point rail so that just sitting on the side of the running rail is not going to be the only means of connectivity. In fact, it really doesn't matter whether to touch them or not. The polarity is going to be consistent. Running up to the frog, we're going to sever the frog here to separate it from the point rails and uh, once we do that we'll have to put a drop feeder to the frog so that we can power it separately and that will also make this extremely DCC friendly so um, what we'll do is show you each piece uh, as we go along as you can see here we've cut the rail uh, at the point where the frog is going to meet the point rails here and uh, that's been done so now that is isolated to the very end of the switch uh, now what you will do is put a feeder to the frogs and put insulated rail joiners on the center two rails of this turnout so that it stays insulated from the adjacent diverging route and the main line route you can also see on the bottom side uh, the cut rails are all the way through and you want to remove the plastic to make sure they are so that you don't have any short circuits there. Now for the electrical continuity from the point rails to the running rails we're going to jumper these two pieces as you see from the right and left running rail together. Now this can be done with a single piece of wire all the way across and then tack soldered in place and then uh, once that is done, you cut the center wire so that uh, uh, you have the left and right rails connected and you're good to go. Now, Shinohara already solders the rail joiners on one side, uh, so they can slip out, but the rail joiner can't move on the other. So you don't have to worry about doing that. Next is the points themselves. Now, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be taking... A piece of telephone wire which is 22 gauge copper wire and we're going to strip off the insulation and what we're going to do is we're going to make an L shape out of the wire with approximately one eighth of an inch of it hanging off uh, to the uh, 90 degree angle and then we're going to bend that 90 degree angle slightly to one side and in this case I've made a little template here if you will that little hole in the wooden panel here that I'm working on is actually just big enough for this little wire to fit down inside. So once I make that little piece of wire, which is going to be the guide for the points, I stick it down in that hole, and then I put my point rail there, tape it down with scotch tape, put a little bit of solder on it, and it's soldered and ready to go. Now this is what it looks like when it's finished from the top side. And if you look very closely, let's see if I can get a close-up in here. There you go. You've got a right angle solder of that little piece of wire onto the side of the inside of that rail. It's the same on both sides. And what we do is we take that crossbar that was originally on the switch and flip it upside down. And the reason why we do that, and I'll show you in just a bit, but you flip that draw bar upside down and cut off the tabs that you would normally stick um, a draw bar. Um, piece of wire to normally control it because these switches what we're going to do is we're going to either control them with the outside holes or from the center hole using a servo under the layout or you can use a um, any kind of switch machine stall motor or otherwise to do the same thing so now we'll show you the bottom side underneath the point rails 
there was a small piece of copper and that hole in the center represents where that rivet was that held everything together. Now, what this is, is it's basically a set of uh, contacts. And when you throw the switch one side or the other, it would ride the bottom of the running rails to give good connection and good continuity to the points and otherwise power the points all the way through the frog. Where we got rid of that because we don't need it anymore uh, because we have this connection now which takes the outside running rails and connects them to the inside point rails all the time. And with the cut in the frog here, we no longer have a problem with a short and we have good continuity. Now, when you come through the drawbar, you're going to drill two very, very small holes with a pin vise. Down through those holes are where you're going to put that little 22 gauge wire that we made and with those little right angle bends to it that are currently soldered to the point rails. And once you get them down through there, you're going to bend them over gently. Now, that's a very soft copper wire. It doesn't have a lot of strength, but it's perfect for this application because it's just strong enough to be able to bend over and be flexible. So if you have to tweak it a little bit to make sure it's not too tight, you can. The wire will not break. But the reason why we flip that draw bar over, is you can see, the copper contact point that used to be under the points is now under the switch altogether. And because they hollowed that out on the draw bar to fit that in, it allows for these little wires to bend over perfectly and be flush so that they don't grab on the table or the road bed underneath. And there is now the way that your points are now connected to the draw bar and the draw bar can't fall out. So we've solved that issue as well. Last but not least is to solder a very, very small wire across the points where the rail joiner connects them to the fixed rails. Now what you do there is you use some of this wire. This is a very, very fine wire, much smaller than 22 gauge. Take off the uh, insulation. And this wire is uh, basically magnetic wiring wire, but it doesn't have any of the varnish on it. It has insulation on it. Um, and what we do here is we basically take that solder from rail to rail across that rail joiner. What that's going to do is make sure that that point rail has good continuity no matter whether it's touching the outside rail or not. And because the rails are the exact same polarity for each respective rail to the running rail, you are now DCC friendly 100% and you will not stall even the smallest wheel based engine on this particular switch or any switch that you now use to modify in this manner. So this is what it looks like when it's done, folks. Uh, I do this with every switch on my layout. Uh, you don't have to go to the expense of laying your own rail if what's already pre-manufactured will do size-wise, uh, especially if you have old Shinohara track, because old Shinohara track was great for the specs as far as the rail gauge, uh, and the points are well made. As you can see here, when you close those points, uh, you've got a really nice, uh, gentle uh, closure, and you're not going to pick those points. It's a well-made switch. It's rugged, and uh, it'll keep you running great for years to come.